Welcome. Uh, if you're joining us on Zoom tonight and suddenly your camera got turned off, that was me. Humble apologies. Uh, we, in the interest of archiving this for our YouTube live stream, um, we ask that you keep your cameras turned off just so it will highlight just uh, the three of us who are involved in the show tonight. Um, so thanks so much for joining us. Uh, this is our second of the Composer Spotlight series for Inside Out Steel Band. I'm CJ Mengi, director of Inside Out Steel Band, and um, thank you for joining us on Zoom or YouTube or Facebook. Uh, just very briefly about us, most of, I think our audience tonight is very familiar with Inside Out, but if you aren't, we're a nonprofit organization based in Austin, Texas, and our mission is to build community through music, and we've worked really hard over the last few months to keep that going in this new virtual format, and we really appreciate the support and are excited about having some new programming opportunities that wouldn't happen uh, if we were meeting in person. So without further ado, uh, this show was put together by the fabulous Lewis Raymond Colker tonight. And uh, this is featuring the music of the great young composer, Ian Willick. And uh, they are joining us from the upper Midwest. We have uh, Lewis in Lincoln, Nebraska, and Ian is in Aberdeen, South Dakota tonight. And uh, just briefly about Ian, he'll speak before the pieces and we'll do a Q&A afterwards, but he is a graduate student in Austin at UT Austin studying composition and a fabulous musician and I'm very excited for you all to get to hear this music. So uh, I will go ahead and turn this over to Ian. Hello Ian, thanks for being here tonight. Hey everybody, um, thanks so much for joining this virtual concert um, and I just want to start by saying thank you so much to Inside Out um, and to CJ and to Lewis for having me and putting this all together. Uh, I've been looking forward to this for some time so it's great that it's finally coming together. Um, so yeah a little bit about this first piece you'll hear. Um, this is the first piece that Lewis and I worked on together um, it was my first time writing for the steel pan. Um, before meeting Lewis, I didn't really think of the steel pan as a classical instrument. And he basically approached me and said, write whatever you want. And at that time, I had never really had somebody really have that sort of uh, faith and just say, do whatever you want. So that's pretty much what this piece ended up being was learning the instrument and just using, there was no uh, really big structure or anything. Um, just take two notes and uh, kind of see where the pans and learning about the instrument kind of took uh, the material. Um, it's in three movements, um, pretty short movements. Um, so with that, I will turn it over to Lewis. Thank you. 
Wow, great. <laughs> Thank you, Lewis. Um, that piece, uh, Lewis has played all over the place. Um, I, I can't even count how many times we've traveled with that piece. And so it's really great to hear him play it here for the first time now virtually. Um, all right, so the next piece um, you're gonna hear is called Double Down. Um, this was part of a big collaboration Lewis started with this collective we had in Lincoln called the LNK New Music Collective. He put together, I think it was uh, six, was it six? Mm -hmm. Six pieces uh, for solo pan um, uh, between six uh, composers uh, that we were all going to school at the University of Nebraska together. And so this is part of that giant project. So for this piece, um, this was my second time writing for Double Seconds. Um, and as you heard in that last movement, pretty fast and that first movement pretty fast. So I decided with this piece, I'd like to really uh, do something slower that explore uh, the resonance of the instrument. Um, and I think at this time, I had also started playing a little bit of pan. Lewis had taught me a couple of things. <laughs> so um, I realized how sensitive and uh, expressive it really is. Um, so this piece really, I wanted to lean into the dynamic range of it and uh, it has such a beautiful resonance. So really uh, just kind of sit in that sound. Um, the form of the piece, uh, at this time, I was really um, into following narratives. Um, so looking at literature and seeing like, there's different, like there's the boy meets girl story. There's, um, you know, like other, a bunch of different types of archetypes. And so this, this piece um, with it being, I knew I wanted it to be slow. I decided to kind of follow a model of a tragedy where something continues to continually get worse and worse and worse and until it finally degrades into some sort of um, cathartic maybe experience, experience. I don't know how, how much this piece is cathartic, but um, yeah, and in tragedies, there's uh, like comedic, uh, like sad clown kind of comedy. So uh, yeah, that's a couple of things uh, you can listen for throughout this piece, Double Down. Uh, with that, I will send it to Lewis. Thank you. 
Thank you, Lewis. That was beautiful. Um, thank you. Um, yeah, so I hope that uh, you maybe picked up on a little bit of the sense of tragedy and uh, person digging themselves into a, a constant whole sort of narrative. Um, the next piece is a little less um, of a downwards trajectory. This piece um, is the latest thing that I wrote with Lewis, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this was done last summer. And during that time, I was just finishing up undergrad and um, about to move to Austin. So this piece isn't really programmatic, but it was really during like a meditative time 
of change. And um, so I think that it took, it, it took a lot of time to, to write. So I think just writing it over the time of thinking about moving and things, uh, just it gave it this sort of shape um, of a slow burn to something really exciting happening. Um, and I thought that was significant because, you know, Lewis grew up there and uh, was like, oh, you would love it there. So <laughs> um, it was just a weird coincidence that we had uh, found this uh, new love for collaborating with each other um, with this instrument. And um, so this piece was kind of um, just tried to put all of that into it. Our, um, so you'll hear some two note things that are kind of a callback to um, the two note variations and short variations. Um, uh, you'll hear some arpeggios uh, like figures that are uh, similar uh, to that first piece as well. Um, so yeah, this piece is kind of uh, just a, a celebration of that, uh, our collaboration in, in Nebraska. Um, yeah, the video you'll see is a pre premiere, a rough pre premiere <laughs> of uh, the official music video for it um, that I did with uh, video partner Jack Klecker. He shot the video. Um, so, yeah, anything else you would want to add, Lewis? Um... Yeah, so this piece was a consortium commission. There were about 10 other people who came together to commission this piece. And I'm just glad that we were able to make it happen and to get this piece out of you. It's one of my favorites that I've gotten to play in the last year. Um, it's a little longer, it's 14 minutes, but it just kind of breezes by. It doesn't really feel like 14 minutes even when I'm playing it or recording it. Um, and shout out to Jack because the video is really, really incredible. Yeah, and thank you to everybody who was a part of the making of this project. That was really awesome because uh, that gave me the time and space to, to make something like this. So um, yeah, with, with that, I think we should just play the video. Hope you enjoy. Thank you. 
<laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't do anything. I was. Yeah. Just... Yeah. Yeah. Thank you again to Jack for putting that together. He's done it in a just a couple days too. Uh, so, really awesome and thankful for that. Um, yeah, I guess Lewis. Yeah, um, so CJ, I think we're ready for the Q&A. And I had one that I wanted to start with while we're sure. on that piece. Um, so Ian, when you wrote Two Points about a year ago, you sent us a version of the track. And right. then when we were working on the video and we were talking about it earlier this week, you sent me back just a pretty different version of the track. So I figured we could do a before and after comparison of first version right. versus the second version. And just if you would talk about why you made those changes, it'd be cool to get inside your brain a little bit. Right. So I guess I'll just start for those of you who don't know, I'll play the, this piece is for pans with a backing track. So, um, what I edited was the backing track. The original one uh, was finished about a year ago. And after watching it live a few times and um, hearing the recorded version, I decided um, uh, to redo some things. So here, I'll go ahead and share my screen here. Um, so this is the original version. I'll just play maybe in here. Oh, I don't think I, did I share my audio? Yeah, that worked. Can you hear that? Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Those good sections, do you think, Lewis? Yeah. So here. Yeah. Oh, good. So those are pretty. So that's pretty different from the. Should I play the original or the actual version though? So. Here's the uh, official version now. 
kind of that same spot, much different. Could you kind of tell difference there? So um, yeah, it's it's quite a bit different. And I guess a lot of the changes I was thinking of making were to make sure that the, the live version, if, when you would go to a concert in person, um, it would work for as many players as possible. I got a chance to see a few different people play it fortunately, um, and just in the, in, the, in the different halls and things, the original track had a lot of really small details and cool ear candy effects that ended up uh, kind of distracting from the player and uh, maybe covering up their playing or things. So I decided to kind of simplify the track. Um, I knew it was gonna be paired with the visual of the video. Um, as much like a concert, you know, you get the visual in order to highlight the player more and um, pretty much just the less is more thing. Um, and I think, and I hope, I hope you guys like it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so that's why I decided to make the changes. Cool. Yeah. Fantastic performance uh, for both of you. Ian, thanks for such wonderful compositions. And it's really Thank exciting you. getting new music into the rep uh, in the steel pan world. And to have someone like Lewis, that's such a like top notch player to give good representative performances right out of the gate. Um, it's amazing, you know? So I really appreciate both of you with your efforts on this. Um, I do want to follow up with the video aspect of what we just saw, because I thought it was stunning. Um, how much, like how much collaboration did the two or three of you have in terms of the visual concept? Um, you know, there are a lot of intentional things, connections that I could make on the second viewing of it, but I'm just curious, uh, Ian, for you, like how much you talked to Jack about it or Lewis, those kinds of elements, what came into play with that? Or did you just turn it over to uh, Jack in terms of his creativity? I think starting off, we, I mean, Jack was familiar with the music he was on the consortium, he had heard the piece um, and Jack just has a really strong aesthetic sense. And so Jack walked into that recording session with mirrors and light bulbs. And I think the day before he had gone to Walmart and gotten three long $5 mirrors <laughs> that he decided that he was going to use. Um, and so I had no idea what was going to happen and I just knew it was going to be cool. And so, I think like most of what was in the video, I recognized from shooting it, but none of it looked the way that I thought it would, mm -hmm. which was a really neat experience, recognizing all the component materials, but like the whole output was foreign to me. Hmm. Yeah, Jack and I um, worked together a lot. So um, going into it, I really trusted him. Um, to, you know, he has such great taste. Um, so I think I, I think we kind of went back and forth with the lights thing. I thought it would be cool since it's two points and it was kind of about these two places. Um, I, I think I mentioned to him, I want there to be two lights in the video. And then I think he was, he was came up with the mirrors and how to do everything. Um, so yeah, that's all Jack. Um, and then as far as the extra footage goes, that has actually came about within the past kind of week almost. And that's how a lot of fun things happen. You know, it's really spontaneous. Um, he sent a rough cut and I had, uh, we were going back and forth of, you know, it could use a little something. And since the piece is about kind of moving and, traveling and that sort of headspace, um, we decided we could get some foot, uh, some extra footage of like roads and lights of, you know, just abstract places that might help 
kind of convey that sort of feeling or, um, you know, because everybody experiences these things. So just images that would help get that point across. Um, mm. So that's where some of the visual things came from. Yeah, we should plug, Jack has some really great videos um, that are his ambient and electronic compositions and like live process vibraphone with a lot of kind of nature and just, I don't even know how to describe the footage, but very similar vibe to the street footage and similar kind of video processing that yeah. he's doing. Very minimal atmospheric um, sort of things, yeah. Yeah, so I like this video was a good, was already really well suited to his musical aesthetic and his visual aesthetic. So it just gelled really well, I think, between the two of you. Yeah, it all works perfectly. So Thank you. Um, I think you said this before, but when is the actual premiere premiere? We're lucky that we got the pre premiere on this, but when does it release? Friday. Yeah, Friday next next week on the 28th. Nice. Yep. And it might be a little different still. So keep an eye out. <laughs> well, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, Exciting. you can change things as long as you want, right? Yeah, <laughs> so, that's cool. Right up until the, the yeah. hour before. Yeah. So uh, we had spoken just a little bit before we um, went live tonight. And um, kind of, I like to start with just one general question. And it, it will tie into a couple of questions we have. Uh, as a reminder, again, if you'd like to ask any questions of either Lewis or Ian, you can put it in the chat on Zoom or on YouTube. We're watching both of those right now. And um, this is a portion of these shows that we've really enjoyed the past couple of months. Um, so Ian, the, the thing that we spoke about, maybe you could just um, give us a little bit of insight into uh, you know, if there's a time or a moment or just an era that led you into wanting to study composition formally. Sure. So um, it kind of started just at my childhood. It was just so filled with music, really informal music, playing in cover bands, um, uh, you know, where the atmosphere is play every instrument. Like the drummer will try to show the bass player how to play or, you know, the guitar player will try to play the drum beat to a song. You know, that was the kind of environment I grew up in. And so it was very um very open and very welcoming and uh to try everything so when it came uh for me to decide what i wanted to do with college music it was obvious but i felt like i had some so many things going on i had, i had played strings for a little bit i had played percussion for most of my life i had kind of played piano so i didn't feel an attachment to one instrument and when i learned about composing as a as a thing um i had already been writing music you know with my friends in that environment just like rock <laughs> music you know playing like weezer and things like this so it just made sense like oh i can just write music for people and, and collaborate with people like lewis in this small uh, chamber and solo setting um really mesh with me in college. So that's kind of where uh, I found composition. Nice, thank you. Yeah. Lewis, do you wanna grab some of the YouTube comments? Are you watching that one or do you want me to watch that one? Um, I can go for the YouTube comments. Okay. Um, so Lindsay asked if there was someone on, for Ian, if there was someone on your wish list for collaboration. Oh, a filmmaker. Is that a weird question? I would love to work with like Guillermo del Toro or um, somebody who just does crazy visual things um, or like a, a game, a, I don't know any video game, but like somebody who, that would be cool. Um, as far as musicians, oh man. um you know it, it, you know everybody the composer thing is like always uh you know got to get the large ensemble um pieces so orchestras and things like that so it'd be great to work with uh i i write mainly write for these small sorts of settings so 
if we can gather in, in groups in the future, collaborating with a, a big group of people would be awesome. Um, open I don't know if that answered very well. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Open invitation if you ever want to write a steel band piece. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> that out's been pretty kicking on the steel band videos. So that is a safe distanced large ensemble at your disposal. Mm -hmm. I second that. <laughs> Sweet. Thanks. Yeah. We, we've got your players. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, one other question on the YouTube. Everything else is just compliments on the writing. A lot of shout outs from people who are involved in the project. Jack is on there, Sam Moore, Jonathan Anderson, uh, Connor Beats. So hello to everyone on the YouTube. John Wayne is playing it from the speakers at work um, in the kitchen. So that's awesome. And then one small question. So that minor third, that's kind of the main theme of two points at the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, Ehlers was asking if that was a summertime quote. No, that was uh, quoting myself kind of loosely, quoting short variations. So that if it sounds like that, it's kind of inadvertent. <laughs> I steal from myself a lot, that might be selfish but then it's not plagiarism or anything. Yeah, you're not gonna get on your own case about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Cool. So one over here on the Zoom, uh, Angela Smith. Hello, Angela. Uh, my question to Ian, what composers or music have inspired and influenced you? Yeah, great question. Lately, this whole summer, uh, back to May about, I've really just fallen. I used to really enjoy his, this composer's music back at, at, like when I was a sophomore or freshman. But recently I've just fallen in love with Debussy's music again, um, especially his chamber music, like um, his string quartet and his sonata for viola, flute and harp. Um, he just, gets so many for that time the colors and um and, and timbres that he gets with small instruments are just awesome so Debussy um even in this uh that two points that last piece with the electronics I actually listened to Debussy and he was his music was a big reason I wanted to redo it because uh, to redo the electronics because um, he just blends his instruments so well. And I really wanted to strive for that sort of same blend um, with electronics and an instrument. So that's a classic that I really like. <laughs> Lewis, you got anything on your end? Uh, I do not. So I think these last ones are all you. All right, we have one from Virginia. Hello, Virginia. Uh, so Ian, what is different for you about composing for Pan as opposed to other instruments? And then uh, great music, gentlemen, I loved it. And yay, Jack, as well. Well, thank you so much. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, what's com different about composing for Pan? Well, what was so fun about that first piece, the first time writing for the instrument, is the pan is like kind of in a spiral and uh, the notes are in a spiral as opposed to like a piano where it's all in a row so um that's why that first piece was just such an uh, awesome time to write because it makes you rethink chords and um harmonies in a completely different way um all of my instrument, all the instruments I had ever played are like a guitar where it's all in a row or a piano is all in a row or a cello. Same thing. It's all in a row. So having the limitation of you have two, you're holding two things. So you can only play two notes, four mallets if um, you feel ambitious. Um, so the limitations of the two mallets and the really uh, interesting layout um, 
presents some awesome challenges and just really makes you rethink harmony to make it feel good to play, um, but also still sound sound good. And we have one last question on Zoom from Lindsay. Um, you, you've talked about this a little bit, but this is maybe a little more specific. Mm -hmm. uh, do you prefer to write solo pieces or ensembles and why? Well, I think most of my experience has been in um, solo and small, smaller ensembles, so like trios or quartets, those sorts of things. But also a, a lot of my, I have a lot of experience in electronic stuff, which is kind of like a large ensemble because you have this infinite world of sounds you can make, which is kind of like an orchestra. Like you can make super high sounds um, like the flutes, piccolos um, to, you know, all the way low sounds like bass. So, um, so I guess I don't, I don't prefer one or the other um, because with a large ensemble, you have so many colors you can work with and um, that's fun. But I, I think I go back and forth on this a lot. So I don't really have um, an answer, but I really, at the end of the day, I prefer collaboration over everything. And it's really hard to get um, a long intimate collaboration with a large ensemble versus a soloist or a small group of people that you can just shoot a text at two in the morning like hey can you play this for me you know so um so in the end of the day the whole, with the whole writing process in mind um i think i would i would prefer uh solos or duets or trios things like that mm -hmm. wonderful um so those are the questions i have anything else lewis yeah so uh, wow, Ian, where could I find these pieces if I wanted to play them? Because I don't have any of these scores. Yeah, great question, Lewis. Um, so the first two pieces I have on my website at ianwillockmusic.com. It's under the works section. And they're name your price. So if you're just looking for some notes to play, you can just download them for free. Um, the last piece is now also available. Um, it's not free because of the electronics part, um, but if, if, you, uh, if you're in a certain situation right now with everything and you are dying for music, uh, you can send me an email and I'll, <laughs> you know, we can work something out. Um, yeah, so there are PDF downloads. I don't do print, um, so. Uh, yeah, feel free to check out my website, all my music's up there for download or for purchase. Cool. Um, and then one other thing that really, especially like after getting two points so much in my brain the last couple of weeks um, to point out is that Ian just released an EP a few weeks ago called Salt Creek Remixed. Recomposed. Recomposed. Yeah. Um, and especially like with the changes to the track, I'm hearing a lot of Salt Creek in the new two points and hearing a lot of two points in Salt Creek. Um, will you talk a little bit just about that project? Because I'm hearing some of the same ideas. Yeah, totally. So some of the, the thing about hearing the same ideas um, is an idea uh, kind of an approach to music that I've been uh, really obsessed about lately is, and it's not necessarily a musical approach, but uh, a creative approach. Uh, like, especially in today's market, you have world building, right? So you have like people like Marvel or Harry Potter or Star Wars or all of, or in the video game industry, it's the same thing. These, uh, creative people who build these worlds of projects that uh, it could be in the same thing. And then you look at maybe like the, like for instance, like the Twin Peaks universe or something, um, you know, it's, it's world building. So um, that's why you're hearing a lot of the same similarities is because to me in my brain, they're all in the same world in the same sense. And I wrote them or I redid the track and 
was doing that EP almost at the same time. So a lot of the same techniques as well as, you know, thoughts and just my instincts were in a lot of the same place just because I was doing it at the same time. Um, do you want to know more about that project or? Um, yeah, maybe just like the backstory of the recomposition versus the composition. Yeah, that, uh, if you haven't heard it, you can check it out on Spotify or iTunes or YouTube. Um, it's uh, Salt Creek Recomposed was um, just redoing uh, old studio recording of my first electronics piece that had violin and marimba in it. And yeah, it basically was starting from scratch, just using the recording I had and the old uh, backing track to just make something completely different. And like I said, in the same world. Um, so um, trying to just make everything, like if you were to put it on, a, on an album, it would maybe, it would maybe work, maybe not, but <laughs> um, yeah. Cool. Well, thank you, Ian, for all of the yeah. great music. Um, thank you. It's been fun hanging out this week as we've been putting this together. Yeah, thank you so much for having me and playing three <laughs> of my pieces. And uh, yeah, it's been great. Have you guys spoken at all about uh, the next project? Um, not yet. Not so much. Not really. I'm just planting a seed. Just putting yeah. it out there. <laughs> well, talk about that steel man piece. Oh right. yeah, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, just put it on your list. Put it on. Yeah, your list. right. Yeah, we'd like to hear more from you. Okay. Um, yes. Congratulations to both of you again. Thanks for making this show happen tonight and uh, to give us a peek into your world. Ian is also really refreshing and insightful. Uh, Lewis, fantastic playing as always. Do you, uh, Lewis, do you want to talk about uh, our next show in the series? Yes. Um, so stay tuned for a date, but our next show is going to feature Alexis C. Lamb. Um, I've played one of her pan solo pieces for another Inside Out concert this summer, um, Internal Dialogue, which is absolutely bonkers of a piece. Uh, it's for double seconds combined with tenor pan. Uh, I will be playing hopefully one of her full steel band pieces with a multi-track recording. And then there's one other piece that still working out the details, but is gonna be really exciting. And it's also going to include some electronics from a new project that she's working on. So um, just keep up with insideoutsteelband.org or subscribe to the newsletter to hear more details about that as it comes out. Perfect, thank you. And uh, one last little plug for Inside Out. Um, thanks for sticking around all the way to the end tonight. Uh, as Lewis said, if you keep up with us through the newsletter or our website or social media, we have a lot of things that are still coming up. Um, we are doing an Inside Out watch party on uh, Friday, July the 28th, uh, which will include a premiere of another Lewis Raymond Kolker piece um, that I've heard the audio to and it's just unbelievable. So you don't wanna miss that. Uh, a couple of other new pieces. We should have a new Blue Iron percussion video to premiere that night as well, which is Morgan Tao and Diana Loomer. Um, so please tune in for that. That would be a week from this Friday. Uh, of course, we've got our good old Inside Out Sprouts, which we've been talking up a lot this summer. If you have any young ones in your home or friends or family up to about age five or six, we are doing Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. Central Time. Uh, we've got a fun interactive kids show with two great hosts, uh, Audrey Holden, Lauren Malloy, are doing a wonderful job as hosts of Inside Out Sprouts. And um, if you'd like to learn to play pan, we are your place. Tuesday nights, we have online community steel band classes. So feel free to check that out at any point. We'll be online um, coming up still into the fall and we would love to have you join us. No experience necessary. Uh, you can even learn with an app. We have some folks that don't have steel pans in their homes and they're learning to play steel pan with us using an app on a tablet. So once again, thank you so much for being here tonight. Um, it's really a pleasure to get to continue to stay connected and to highlight new music, new musicians, new composers, and uh, wherever you can, wherever you are, keep supporting local music and live music. Stay safe and we'll see you the next time. Good night, thank you.